Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey there, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in today for your word for the day. We are finishing our look at the story of the judges, finishing up the story of Samson. And I've got good news and I've got uh, other good news. And uh, the good news is we get to see some redemption in the life of Samson here. The last two days looking at some of these events have gotten pretty bleak and it might look like uh, the, uh, the anti-hero here as he's almost become has completely failed in his mission to save the Philistines as he has fully broken the Nazarite vow. His girlfriend Delilah has cut his hair. He's been captured by the Philistines. His eyes are gouged out and he's now in prison. Um, so the good news is that there's some redemption we'll see here. The other good news is if you're tired of judges, uh, my wife Amber will be starting tomorrow in a new topic of the Old Testament that uh, might be refreshing. And I, she is one of my favorite people on Word for the Day, aside from myself maybe. But uh, we are going to look at Judges chapter 16, the last half of this chapter, and see how the story of Samson ends. So uh, the story continues from last episode we looked at and how Samson uh, had, again, been uh, captured. His eyes were gouged out. He was in prison. The Philistines are throwing an, uh, a huge party. This huge uh, enemy of theirs, uh, Samson, with all of his strength and all the ways he has caused mayhem, has been defeated. And they've figured it out. They solved the riddle and have defeated him. They're worshiping their false gods. They're partying. And they say, hey, bring Samson in here to entertain us. Let's celebrate even more. It says this in verse 26, As Samson said to the young men who held him by the hand as they led him in, let me feel the pillars on which the house rests that I may lean against them. Because he's blind now. Now the house was full of men and women of the lords of the Philistines. There were on the roof, there were about 3,000 men and women who looked on while Samson entertained. As Samson called to the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once, God. We're hearing Samson pray. Interesting. He said, please remember me and uh, strengthen me only this once, O oh God, that I might be avenged on the Philistine for my two eyes. As Samson grabbed the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, and his right hand on one and his left on the other. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than all of those that he had killed throughout his life. His brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtalal in the tomb of Manoah, his father. And he had judged Israel for 20 years. And thus ends the story of Samson and all of its destructive tendencies here. Now, Samson judged is the, the people for, for 20 years. What's his legacy? As we reach the end of some of these stories, it's interesting to reflect on what is the legacy of this person? Well, unfortunately, the legacy of Samson wasn't so great. He had a legacy of not really pursuing God and putting him first until he desperately needed him here at the end. He had a, a tendency to do what was right in his own eyes. He had a tendency to get involved with the completely wrong women, and that led to a ton of issues in his life. But what's so interesting is someone who maybe looked like he had failed. Again, from before he was born, an angel of the Lord came and prophesied over him and his mother and father, this person will save it, the, the people from the Philistines. And he's to keep this vow from his birth to his death. He was supposed to keep the Nazarite vow of, of not drinking wine, not going near dead bodies, and, and not cutting his hair. He failed at that, and seemingly he failed at saving the people from the Philistines. Except he kind of didn't. Because in the end, he made movement and progress towards setting people free from the Philistines by defeating this massive group of their leadership and lords and, and the people there. And it looks like it kind of worked. And we might be tempted to look at this and see, go, see, it doesn't matter what you do. It all works out in the end. But that's not the moral to be learned here. No, the moral to be learned instead is that God uses imperfect people to accomplish his perfect purposes. Yeah, I know there's a lot of P's in that sentence, but it's so important. God uses imperfect people to accomplish his perfect purposes. And of imperfect people, Samson was certainly one of them. 
Samson certainly is not a role model that we would put on a trading card and encourage our, our young boys to be like and encourage our young girls to marry someone like him, especially with that side of his life. He wasn't a role model. He didn't honor God throughout his life with his decisions and actions and behaviors, and yet somehow through that, God still accomplished the purpose that he had for Samson. And I hope that that does a couple of things for you. I hope as you look at that reality that God uses imperfect people to accomplish his perfect purposes, that that gives you some, some confidence in a few areas. One, I hope it gives you the confidence that God can accomplish some perfect purposes in your life. You may look and go, man, I, I'm not perfect. I can't I can't teach, I can't sing on stage, I can't do these things, I can't witness well enough to my friends, I can't fill in the blank of all the things we like to use to, to make excuses of following God. But he can still work in your life. Secondly, I hope it gives you the confidence that God's plans aren't thwarted by our moronic decisions. Sometimes I feel like we, we carry this weight that if, if we feel like we're serving God and we mess up, that we've now thrown the whole universe into imbalance because we blew it. But guess what? When God called you to serve him and live for him, he factored in your ignorance and, you know, whatever it might be in ahead of time. Your, your behavior, your unfaithfulness, your wandering, your slip-ups and failures aren't going to thwart God's purposes and I hope as well, as you look at our world, as you look at maybe how bleak things might be in your eyes or in the eyes of the news or in these different ways, things look pretty bleak for God's people here. For 40 years, they were under the, the, the thumb of the Philistines before God called and, and ordained for Samson to be born for 20 years. They're kind of wondering if this here is going to work out, if this judge is going to succeed, and it looks like he doesn't until it is because God's plans will always come about. There's nothing that can stop them. There's not any evil or rebellion. There's no force that can overcome God's purposes. And so I hope that that gives you hope for our world, that God's purposes are still going to continue forward, despite what things look like or how bleak they might be. So today, I hope that you learn from Samson, certainly not in his life decisions, but I hope that you learn from Samson to trust God that he's going to work, that he's going to accomplish his perfect purposes, even through imperfect people. And I hope that you learn from Samson how important it is to trust and obey God in every area and not to do what's right in your own eyes. Because I hope that as we look at the life of Samson, we would all desire a different ending to our story, the one that's kind of a sad irony and, and one that ends in destruction. But if we live pointing our life towards obeying God and doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord, then we have the hope of hearing, well done, good and faithful servant, when the end of our days comes. It's our hope and prayer for you, Calvary. I hope you go and live that out. We'll see you next time.